Welcome to EIPIP meeting 58. I have shared agenda in the chat. So let's start this meeting with uh, congratulating the new EIP editor joining in the Ethereum GitHub repository. His name is Devin John. We know him by Panda P1. So he uh, created pull request to name to be updated on the EIP1. That is uh, open. Uh, if any other editor may approve it, it can be done. The other pull request to update Sorry, him, Mark. it is. Yeah, uh, I think it's afternoon. Okay. Oh, if it is done, then it's cool. I thought I checked it in the morning, in my morning. <laughs> okay, fine. Never mind. That's good. Thank you. No, I don't see it. I think there is another pull request. No, number is 5156. Um, I'm sharing the link right here in the chat. So the one pull request oh, that yeah. has been that one that has been merged is like GitHub notification, but this is the another one which is to add him in the EIP one. So I hope uh, this would be done. And uh, Oh, he did it as two separate PRs. Okay. I was yeah, confused yeah. about that. Yeah. 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 And it looks like like client left a comment that it has to be in alphabetic order. So probably he can update the pull request and then we can get it merged. Well, anyway, congratulations to him as well as to us. We get one more person in the group. I don't see him in the call, but I hope he'll be around to uh, follow the recording and uh, leave his comment suggestions thoughts for whatever we are doing with EIP. Moving on to the first item listed here in the agenda is PRs need discussion. Panda Peep left some comment uh, in the last meeting agenda and I have uh, taken it from there. The request was to uh, get it discussed here in this meeting. The first one here is remove greeting bot. I see comments from almost all editors and it looks like mostly people are in agreement though Axic had a comment. That also looks like it has already been answered. So yeah, if anyone would like to summarize the discussion, maybe to announce decision. <laughs> I'm just waiting to see if Alex has any additional comments after responding to him. Okay, that makes sense. We can give it some more time to keep it there. The other one is a revised EIP 2535. It uh, looks like uh, there is heavy changes done. I have added it here because you know it was requested by the Panda Peep to be getting uh, to be discussed in the EIP AP meeting. However, Matt and Sam also looked into this pull request yesterday. Uh, I suppose uh, there was some comment left too. So yeah, if anyone else has anything to add here, the main question is about the manual merge. And one suggestion that I brought up, like it should not be going back to draft, it should be going back to review. What's the question about manual merge? Uh, so the uh, EAP editor, he has proposed a lot of uh, changes and also requested that uh, the proposal should be moved from last call to draft. And if there is no response received from authors and then it has to be done by EAP editors. Uh, not, not draft, uh, back to review. Um, yeah. I'm generally inclined to leave it up to the author um, to approve it. Like I don't like touching people's EIPs unless it's an absolute last resort. And the author of this one is fairly active. So I think we can get them to agree. Sounds fair. It's mud gen, right? Yeah. So That's they've right. actually they've actually commented on the PR, so I, I don't think it's gonna need a manual merge. Very well. I think uh, we have him on our Discord as well, Catalyst Discord. So I will also try to ping him about this uh, if we do not get any response in another week or two. I think it just needs to be taken out of draft. I think that's the only thing that needs to happen. I think it has a few more edits from that yeah, yeah, requested. Yeah. But, but yes, it needs to be moved out of draft and it needs a few more edits. That's it. 
yeah shouldn't need a manual merge at all cool yeah. cool thank you moving on to item number two that is eips discussion took place uh, i have added this item just to, because there was some discussion on discord about fem uh, or the e3 search i know there was a general agreement to have fem as the discussion too and uh, this morning i noticed that proposal 5133 they also have updated it to fem so is it uh, generally uh, fine like we will continue with fem or is there anything to be discussed here when you say ethereum do you mean ethereum research e3 search that's right yeah sorry did i say that? Um, yeah so that was just a mistake i think it was overlooked they i think yeah one direct says it very explicitly uh, ethereum magicians not right. research. So whatever EIP has that, we should just encourage the author to fix it. Yeah, I think it is. It has already been fixed. Uh, I saw that it has been uh, merged, so it is corrected there. Uh, another thing, like we were discussing this uh, in the last meeting, so I created an issue, and I believe we have collected response from most of the EIP editors. And uh, item number three, which was uh, seems to be like uh, liked by most of the people over there. I think it is already in action. Yeah, it's already done. I think we can close this unless someone has additional work they'd like to get done. Okay, that sounds fair. I mean, we can definitely close it. What is the last comment? Yeah, fine. I'm fine closing it. And uh, thank you so much. Looks like uh, after a long time, I see issues as 15. It isn't two digit. I mean, two digit, but lower, lower, like uh, uh, 10s and 20s. It's, it's very low. Yes, it is becoming manageable. Right. Cool. Thank you. Moving on, I, that is item number three, but I would still like to skip it for some more time. Um, we'll wait for uh, another, maybe a few items to go over before we come back to execution specs discussion. Skipping that item, item number four is Git Poa badges. Uh, so uh, there is an issue link here in which uh, the Git Poa team discussed about uh, uh, how to be uh, distributing Git app for uh, recognition of contributors or maybe awarding them or make it memorable for them. So for uh, cat herders, uh, the link is live. I have added the link in the agenda. So whoever have contributed to the cat herders website or to the EIP IP repository, EM or L2E will be getting poems. Um, this is just a piece of information. So please check out uh, the live link and share your feedback. And uh, there is a proposal to provide a retroactive uh, award to um, people who, who have contributed to Ethereum related repository, which are not active anymore. So yeah, please check out the issue. And if you have any comments, thoughts or suggestion, feel free to add. Okay, uh, number five is uh, EIP is GitHub commissions and support. So I tried to reaching out to my usual contact, but it seems like uh, I didn't get much response from there. So uh, I don't know, but uh, the issue of spamming was communicated and looks like a Joshua who is also uh, for the ethereum.org. He responded on the Discord channel that he will be around to help on that. So I hope to continue communication with him for any other issues that arises in future. I am still working on Sam Wilson's uh, permission for EIP GitHub repository. I don't know, I don't see Tim here on the call. Otherwise I would have asked him if he may be able to point us to any other person who can be like faster in response. <laughs> Never mind. Um, there is item number six about EIP bots. I don't see Jose on the call. So maybe we can skip unless anyone has anything specific to comment on. Nope. Okay, no problem. The next one is EIPs inside. It's monthly EIPs status reporting. 
in june today is 15th of june half month have already passed in june we have two eips 2464 and 2364 which were long pending proposals moved to final six eips are added as draft and two new proposals are waiting to be reviewed uh, i mean uh, they are um, they are being reviewed uh, but there are some more work to be done on that side before it can be merged as draft a new EIP editor, Gavin John, I did mention earlier in the meeting, has been added to GitHub repository. And there are more charts and graphs than you can check out in the report that is added to the agenda. We had this EIP editor's apprenticeship meeting yesterday. The recording link is added to the agenda. I don't think we have any more items to go over. So let's move on to the item number three which is core EIP in an executable spec world. I know Greg, you mentioned earlier that we should be holding this session because you were not able to make that last meeting. Uh, so yeah, uh, if you would like to maybe add something. Um, I've discussed it quite a lot. Um, and Sam and I have discussed it one-on-one uh, -on -one quite a lot. So I'm I'm not quite sure where it stands. Do we do we have an actual EIP for it? Well, I'm look the link I'm looking at now isn't isn't yet a PR. Yeah, we we don't have like a formal um, proposal like written up to change EIP one yet. Um, I think okay. we're still in the uh, rough consensus phase among editors. <laughs> okay. Um, so so. Like personally, I think um, I, I I'm still weakly in favor of making it mandatory for core EIPs, but um, you know I, I don't want to push the issue too much if um, we we don't have rough consensus among editors. So yeah, well you need rough consensus with the all right the core EIPs the core editor blah 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 the the core devs have to agree too because they have to read these things. Yeah, yeah, and and I think um, from from um, the Discord chat we had um, a couple of weeks ago, I think people were um, very unsure, and there was no clear direction from the core devs. Yeah, we haven't discussed the broader community that much either, as to some EIPs the broader community really cares about, and most of them don't read Python. Um, and I haven't I, mentioned it. With I, that, I've been, I think the broader community doesn't really read any programming language. So, yeah. It, it, uh, well, a lot of them do, but a lot of them don't, and they do care. Um, and a lot of them, I don't read Python very well. I, I can't count how many programming language. I can't count how many I either know or used to know. Python even I've written, but it, it's like a process of soaking it in. It's like, okay, now I remember. Um, but I've, I've tried to read like even the beacon chain spec. It's just like, I get almost nothing out of it. It's like, yeah, if I was implementing it, it, it would be useful. But as far as trying to understand it at a conceptual level, it's, it's useless to me. Um, I think no matter what language we choose, there's going to be a set of people who do not speak that language. Um, well, English yeah, meets even that English, I know. But some portion of the population. Right. So like, we have to accept that there will be people who cannot um, read the spec. And the question is, is which set of people do we want to de facto it's exclude? Right. But if you're asking someone to learn English, that's of more general use than Python. Um, but even more so, there's things you need to say. Uh, that yes, cannot be, but I would argue. You can't say certain things in Python. I'm looking at specs I've written and others have written um, and others in the industry. Look at the WASM spec. It, there's there's one page of procedural specification and they even say this isn't this isn't spec this is appendix this is example 
The entire spec is declarative. There is nothing procedural in the spec. And Python is not a language for writing declarative specifications. My own specs, it's English, but the spec itself is a fair amount of it is declarative. It's these are rules you need to follow, not this is an algorithm. Then there's an in, then there is, yes, this is an algorithm for checking that the code follows the rules, but simply specifying the algorithm would be generally useless. Um, trying to reverse engineer the rules from the algorithm would not be easy at all. Um, and asking everyone else to write, um, to write the code from the algorithm, it's like, yes, you can just blindly port code, um, but it's, you know, it's really not fair to people to just say blindly port this code that you don't understand. Wait, what's this sure. code do, you know? And, well, it, <laughs> and you, you could, so I, th I think the, perhaps the issue is, is I think when I think executable spec and, the EI core EIP is moving over to executable spec. I am at what I'm imagining is that people will still probably write some human readable portion. Um, and that's going to be held, I think, in markdown files, tentatively the plan somewhere. Um, and in that place, you could still have your declarative specification and that would still be valuable. The, the only thing that's really changing here is that we're, we're kind of rearranging where things live. So that's a change. And we're saying, we no longer will allow you to submit, or we will tentatively, you know, request that everybody writes a reference implementation plus reference tests that they, that ref, where the reference implementation passes it. And in order for that to work functionally, we need to have a shared reference implementation. And that shared reference implementation is going to be in some language. It could be Go, it could be Rust, it could be Python, it could be whatever. And if we accept all of that, which maybe you don't, but if we accept all of that, then it's just a choice of, okay, which language is most likely to be approachable by the average developer? And, and I do think Python meets that bill. I agree with you on all your points. I think that Python is not great for declarative stuff. I think Python is not an, a perfect language. I mean, I hate the fact that it's not statically typed. I love statically typed languages. Python's not. Um, these are all things- Our, our Python is. Oh, are you using the static typing stuff? Yep. Okay, well, that's a step up, but nonetheless, it's, it's not the best. I, I've tried it. It's not the best <laughs> st static typer in the world, but it's passable. Um, nonetheless, I think despite all of that, and I'm not, and this is coming from someone I actually hate. Py I don't like Python. Like I do not write Python, but I do recognize that it, it does make for fairly readable code for the average person who, you know, if you just pick a random developer and you don't know what languages they're going to, they speak ahead of time or they write ahead of time. There's a good chance if you show them in Python, they'll be able to figure out what's going on. And, and that's why I think it's a good choice. Again, th this assumes that you still have your, your declarative stuff somewhere, somewhere in a markdown file, in English most likely. Um, somewhere, this is just a way to make sure that every core EIP has tests and a reference implementation, which currently we don't, don't get for a lot of them. Well, you get them, but you get them further down the line when when teams actually start implementing um, and tests actually get written, which is not necessarily, sure. but the EIP author is not necessarily qualified to do that, um, especially if they're not, if they're not on a client team that's maintaining a client, they really just can't do it. Um, but, is there an expectation, um, Sam or Tim, maybe, for a draft proposal in this new executable spec world? Would the is it is it expected before you submit a draft, you already have PR against code, or can you submit a a draft with only the markdown portion, like ignoring like getting to last call or final or whatever, just like to get started? Is the expectation that people have code? or is the expectation that you start with maybe Markdown and you work your way up? What's the expectation today? If I submit uh, a draft today, without the specification section, what will you tell me? Um, or if my specification section, say, imagine uh, 
I I yeah. guess we we allow it because like even this difficulty bomb VIP, the spec just I guess there is one line of code. Yeah, I don't know. So so right now, if you didn't have a, spec a specification section, you submitted a draft, uh, but all the other sections are filled out. I would probably let it through. I'd probably I'd encourage you to fill it out. Um, but I don't think as long as you had the section and you just put TBD in there, I would probably allow it. Um, I, I allow you people to put TBD in all the other sections. Um, I don't think anyone's tried to put TBD for the specification, but I can't think of a reason why I would say no to it. As long as they had, I have said no to people who just literally fill in a blank EAP because they're trying to number snipe. Um, and I'll tell them, no, you need to actually have something here. Like, you can't just have a blank EAP that you fill in later. Um, but if you've got like a motivation and abstract and, you know, all, all, some, some rationale maybe and all these other sections are in there, but you just don't have a spec yet. Um, I would be okay with that personally. I don't know about the other editors. So they have to be proposing something. Um, but uh, sure, but like if the even like an the, abstract is the proposal, arguably, it's just not specified enough to actually do anything with yet. Even the Ypsilon team expresses expresses their what they express in code, they express in Python, but it's not. It's not PRs against a non-existent rep reference implementation. Um, because, but that implementation like isn't final yet. Well, but e even if it was, it's not what they're doing. They're, they're working against their, their C++ client. Um, I've, I've got some PRs going which have code in, in pseudo C and in pseudo go at, at some point I would translate it, but it's hard enough right now, just getting algorithms right without translating it. Um, and I, I really don't want to have to set up a Python system on my machine and get a client running um, and understand the client well enough to make modifications to it. It's just like, fuck that. I'm sorry, but this is hard enough work I'm not getting paid to do. Um, and if we want such a thing, it's, I would just need a lot of help and cooperation from, from a client team that's maintaining that client. For any core IIP, I've at some point needed help you know, from a client team, uh, typically Martin, recently um it'll probably be the epsilon team um if we decide to go with one of my eips um uh, it just i understand we did it this way uh, for the cl layer but they started out with a python implementation and the people working on it you know the whole style was was different it was a matter of starting with a working Python implementation and continuing, continuing to keep it going. And we would have to get in a position of having a working Python implementation and pretty much all the core developers, all of them have it going, they understand it, they can speak it. Um, then yes, at some point it just becomes a bar to entry that before, before you have anything to do with core, um, you've got to understand this, but it's going to take time to get there because it's not where we're at. And even so, I I would resist because I just go. It's yeah. it's not worth it. It's I, I would say no. E EIPs can be much more in the language the author chooses, um, and this transformation happens further down the line. And it's it's more like the yellow paper. Um, there's a team of people that that keep the yellow paper not up to date enough. But if that's a problem, they need resources. We don't just abandon them. Um, so I'm going in circles. I think I think my point of view is pretty clear by now. Um, right. I think two two things that like still make me fall on the, the Python spec side or one like unifying the like beacon chain spec and uh, and and uh, execution spec um, 
like, you know, sure, the systems are different today, but like, we're going to merge in a couple of months. Um, there is, you want Ethereum to be like a coherent thing that like people can wrap their heads around having to like, having one Python spec and then yeah, one unintellig unintelligible math paper that basically we rely on three volunteers to understand and, and upgrade. Um, it, it's just really bad that they're not the same. Um, and I guess the second bit is like, I do feel like we're more bottlenecked by client developers than like EIP proposals. And that's been true for like the past couple of years. And again, like, it seems like from client teams like that I speak to, like generally they prefer the executable spec approach. And um, yeah, and, and I, 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 I simply like, I think we should try to find ways, you know, to make it easy for people to take part in this process and like, you know, perhaps have like very soft requirements around when this a PR to the spec is actually, uh, is actually required. And, and, and I suspect if you have an idea that's like valuable enough and that's your bottleneck, like if everyone thinks that EIP is valuable, but the bottleneck is actually writing a PR to the executable spec, many people will be able to help with that. Um, yeah, so I, I don't know. I, I, it is like a change to the process. And for sure, if like you, you're you working in the Geth code base, like it might be harder, but I think like having a full specification, not having to like rewrite weird parts of Ethereum in an EIP um, and having something also that maps from like the execution to consensus layer when you're thinking about a change that spans both sides. Um, and as much as people want to say that it's going to be modular, like I think, like we look at the next hard fork, there's changes spanning across both sides. I think once you start having things like proposal builder separation, you're gonna have changes on both sides. I mean, all the sharding stuff influences both sides as well. Like it's much more, I don't know, it, it seems much better to have like a, a unified standard where, you know, the, the sharding bit on the consensus layer is specified in Python, but so is the way to access the shard data on the execution layer. And it's on one place, so I, mm -hmm. I don't. I, I struggle to see how we just keep the two separate systems, and like, it seems like the system from the consensus layer side today is like just much more approachable to people. Except this whole thing about like where do you put the the markdown text, but uh, that seems like a much easier problem to solve. Uh, yeah, we've got two very incompatible approaches here. Um, both of both of um, well, the EIP process is a pretty long standing now. Um, they used to say internet time was seven years per one. Um, no, it was worse than that. That's dog years. Anyway, EIP has been around a long time in the context of Ethereum. Um, I don't know. Um, it just seems if we want this there needs to be an EIP team and the people maintaining the IP client, the, uh, sorry, the people, I'm not doing very well this morning. I'm only into my first cup of coffee. Uh, uh, the team maintaining the Python client has to step up to a lot of this, at least for a while in the transition. Um, uh, because you'll lose people otherwise. Um, it may not matter, but you'll you'll lose me. Um, I I I cannot be maintaining a client and trying trying to make diffs against a client um, it, 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 that isn't isn't the client that I'm actually doing the work in, um, and of late that would be go. Uh, or C++ because I'll be working with Martin and or the uh, Ypsilon team. Uh, so as far as getting executable code, unless they move over to Python. Um, so maybe that'll work out at some point. Uh, will this Python client be able to sync up to the main net? Or is it going to be too slow to keep up? Uh, so we can we could do a block in about 
12 to 13 seconds on like a regular laptop. So on a beefier machine, it should be fine. I don't have a beefier machine. Well, I do, but full second. I don't, process. I, don't, I, don't, I don't carry it around with me. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I mean, it can. So like if you're testing individual blocks, it, it, it's totally fine. Um, and I don't like why would you want to sync mainnet on just a, like your development machine? Yeah, so I think that the, the answer is, is it is fully consensus compatible, meaning you can sync mainnet. It is not designed for performance. So pragmatically- I understand that. It. It, to me, it's essential. It has to be able to do that or it can't be a reference implementation. Um, yes, so, so it's, it's, it's capable of processing blocks and doing state transformations and you know all that stuff. Um, what it can't do is do that fast on a low end machine. So like someone could run the Python implementation on a beefy machine somewhere just to make sure that it's staying in sync and it's following sense rules. But like this would not be a client that we encourage users to use because it's unreasonably slow. Oh God, yeah, yeah not, definitely not. <laughs> yeah, I'm not worried about that. I'm worried about the fact that the operating protocol in the end is the spec yeah um, it's yeah i've said this if what's running there has to be specified um it's for the period of time any protocol is running that's what was running doesn't matter what the spec document says um so if we want to document what was running during that period of time that's that's what it was and so if, if the executable spec can't actually keep up, um, it's not as useful. Um, I keep saying, you know, I would love to have a reference implementation. I think that's a very useful thing to have, um, but I would see it as a client alongside the other clients that like the other clients, you know, needs, things need to get implemented and, and ready to go before a release. Um, and so the EIPs would, would pick up Python at some point, um, some of them right away, some of them a little further down the line. Um, so and maybe, maybe before it gets out of review, that's something you want to do, um, but not going into draft. Um, I think on weekly, I don't have any immediate problems with having the process, making it so the process allows for PRs against executable spec that only contain the markdown portion, which is the, the human readable portion. Um, this would be similar to, you know, submitting a PR that just contains comments. Um, I mean, the, the comments in this case are kind of separated out a little bit, but I don't, again, I, I would like more input from others, but I, my, I don't have any initial problems with that. And so that would allow, I think, what you're describing, Greg, where you describe mm -hmm. your, your EIP in English or some custom uh, declarative language or whatever, and put that into a markdown file. You submit a PR against the executable specs repo, which is where these markdown files, I'm hoping will go. I think Tim disagrees, but uh, TBD, they'll, they'll go somewhere. Um, you submit that PR and then as things progress, at some point, there will be a requirement to get the um, the code in, but that can be further along. Maybe you've attracted people with your great idea that are can help you with the Python or do the Python for you. Um, and so we would end up with reference implementation sometime before. Uh, it Not goes just live. any people, there has to be a team of people who maintain that client and part of their job is to work with the IPs to, to get to get them working, and then there's a PR. Yeah. Now, so sticking, I, the P, sticking the PR in the EIP can, it can be huge sometimes. I, I've got a proposal. It didn't get as far as a proposal, but the, it, a P, the PR against Geth would have been huge. It was a, a total rewrite of the interpreter. Um, but then should, <laughs> so if you have something like that, and it's scheduled for mainnet, obviously someone will help you write it. But if you have something like that and like it's not scheduled, like should somebody else than you who's championing it spend time trying to map it to another spec? Like I think 
it's like at some point, like, sure, like, I, I have no doubt that, like, if we have an EIP coming in and, like, there's no PR against the Python spec and that's a reference implementation, like, the EF can have a couple people that, like, work on that. Uh, there's probably client teams as well that work on it. And that's basically how it works on the consensus layer side. You know, we have a few people at the EF who spend time on those specs, um, but they're not like the sole contributors to them. And if something's going to go into a hard fork on the beacon chain, like for sure those people, if nobody else has stepped up to make a PR, those people will like make that PR to the spec. Yeah. Um, but if anyone who has like an idea for an EIP, like it's just not tractable for any team to like implement everybody's random ideas. It's like, there needs to be some sort of gate. And I think that's like roughly when we think something should be in a hard fork. Um, and I think then EIP champions kind of have an incentive to provide this implementation before because it probably increases the odds that their thing gets into a hard fork if more people understand it and there's a clear spec for it. Right. Yeah. It's just at this point, sometimes the idea is clear enough without code changes that it can get discussed for quite a while and the teams can go, yes, this is a good idea. We're going to put it in. Sometimes it's this is a good idea. A bunch of us who put it in, it works. It was a small change. You know, others, you know, I, I could show up, anyone could show up and it's like we've gone into Gath and we've done all this and here's the change. So they've got a big change against Geth. And then it's like, well, you need a Python change. It's like, um, I'm sorry, I've got this done. I've got another job to do. Uh, <laughs> but then if it's, yeah, but if, it, if nobody else feels your change is important, like, you know, you say today you make this PR against Geth, but like, what about Besu, Nethermind, and Aragon? They kind of have to look at the Geth PR and they have to like, basically interpret it and some of those client teams by the way can't look at a guest vr because of licensing issues so like i i understand how it makes your life easier in this specific case but it, it's i don't think it makes the process better like i think if you look at like the process like having a spec that like everyone can read um which is not like some client code is, is much better because now what we have, we, we do have, we have this, this um, um, yeah, we do have this weird like in between um, where like the EEPs are often underspecified and then like people end up looking either at, at get code or like basically f finding out that they disagree on some under specification when we start writing tests for the EEPs and um, mm -hmm. yeah. It just seems this like is, this is part of the process of getting a spec right. That, yes, that I've seen this before. You you get it to a certain point, the teams can start to understand it. And in then in the course of implementation, there's pushback on the author. Um, this is normal. And clearly written English is often of more use to a varied set of teams than it having it expressed in any particular language. Um, and backing up a little, everyone says the yellow paper is incomprehensible math, mathematics. And I just look and go, it's badly written, but the math is actually very simple. There's, but I mean, the, the, you, you can know. say the same thing about the Python spec. It's like, it's but math is a universal language it's well not it, the, it's it, it doesn't around. matter that it's universal it's like who's like the people that you're reaching and like basically those people are like programmers who write who write specs for your theorems so it's like if if you are able to read the yellow paper and like you, yeah it, i'm not concerned that you cannot like get to a point where you have a Python spec working if somebody helps you. It's like, I think the level of skill required to digest, I mean, I know plenty of people who like contributed to Ethereum, I mean, myself included, like I've never read through the entire yellow paper. And I think I can like look at the Python spec and have a really good idea of what's going on. Um, yeah, I- Right, whereas- I would push back pretty strongly. Like I think the yellow paper is like 10X less approachable than even this, 
like weird system we have today, which is like yellow paper plus a bunch of heap diffs. Um, I suspect most of the newer core developers have not necessarily read through the entire yellow paper. Um, or if they do so, they basically rate, read through like the get code on an aside, but like, I yeah, I don't think it's a way that a lot of yeah. people intuitively reason about Ethereum. Yeah, you can go out. There's actually a huge academic literature at this point of, of people going into Ethereum who lean on the yellow paper because they're, you know, they're actually mathematicians and computer scientists. Um, but I I go to the yellow paper but when I need to when I'm implementing or designing and need to make sure that I have things right I go to the yellow paper I if I needed it it's hard work but I would I would go to the yellow paper before I tried to go into client code because right but I think that's kind <laughs> of the the thing it feels like there's a disagreement here where like you kind of refer to the Python spec as like client code, but it's it's not quite that. Like, yes, it, it, it does run and it does take the main net, but like it's not like practical to use as a as a node on the Ethereum network. So it's like it's more like a translation of the yellow paper into Python than it is like client code. And I think I don't know, I think the amount of people who will find that. And I mean, you know, even assuming you know math and, and Python equally well, the yellow paper doesn't really have diffs as well as well established. Um, you know, I I don't basically if you want to look at the diff between two hard forks, I'm not even sure that's possible because last time I checked, uh, it's Andrew from from Aragon who maintains it and like will typically add like an EIP at the time because he does this on like a part time basis. So you need to like pull together like the set of commits that you think maps to a hard fork to get like a diff, it's just like. Oh yeah. Yeah, but it's like, assuming the comprehension is not an issue, I still think it's much less practical. So so just, just to be fair to the yellow paper, I don't think there'd be any issue with generating diffs between hard forks if we follow the right like development practices on the yellow paper. Oh, like, yeah, yeah, like, it, it could text. be done. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, so yeah, just, yeah, just fair, sure. like we, we could add yeah. the tooling to the yellow yeah. paper. Right. If I mean, we, if we fail, paper is also if, GP we, uh, if we fail is to it? maintain the yellow spec paper as a spec, that's that's a big change that affects a lot of people, much more than pe than I think we realize. If people can't go um, to the yellow paper and say this is a canonical spec, or but they correct, can't after the merge. They don't know, like it doesn't tell you, it might be a spec of the EVM. It's like you would, you could strip it down, but it's like, there's no consensus. The consensus of Ethereum won't be in the yellow paper after the merge. There's also nothing stopping people from continuing to maintain the yellow paper like they have today. Like that status quo can continue to hold. Maybe they won't have the consensus portion of it, but the, these people who are doing it today, they're free to continue maintaining and the people who are reading it can continue using that as their resource. Okay, it's, this is, I'll probably wash my hands of this at some point, but this doesn't sound good. Um, we're, there's no formal spec for Python either. So we're building on sand, um, but and it's not it's not literate programming um it, so it's, it's certainly trying to be that's that's the goal okay it's not even close that is one should be able um it, given given the wide audience for the spec is the other trouble um you should be able to read the english and still get the gist of it. I mean, I can go into the literature with a lot of math that I can't follow when I'm trying to just chase some computer science ideas I want to implement. And if they're well written, it's sort of you follow the English, it's well written, and then you kind of go math, 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 math. Okay, English. Okay, I follow what he's doing. Math, 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 math. I'm not quite sure what the hell, you know, but. 
That's how I read all. But, but it's all Python. It's just it's like oh, I can't get any traction here at all. Yeah, I remember. I just go through pages of Python and just go. I don't know what's going on here. I don't know what the concepts are. I don't know what the purpose is. Um, One would hope that and I don't the... know. You know, I, I don't know which of this code is because this is how you do it in Python, uh, and which of this is actual spec. Um, so I think that, I mean, the, the the short answer to which is spec versus which is Python is what is a what is externally observable. Um, but that is a, kind of a cop out answer because determining that is often non trivial. I think yeah, the, I, I understand that uh, the th actual semantics. I think the abs. The, if someone who's writing one of these change proposals, my hope would be is that they do have you know some English commentary, whether that's in comments or if it's in like the markdown file as in the abstract section or something. So a person hopefully will still be able to approach these change set, sets and get a rough idea of what they're trying to do without reading the Python. Now, if you want to get details of what they're doing and you want to be able to implement it, then you'll probably, yes, need to be able to read the Python. Um, but if you just want to know, like, you know, what is this EIP proposing? Like, the again, the abstract comments, those should be sufficient. And if they're not, I would say that the authors are not doing a good job. Um, like, the, this should, the Python, yeah, I don't know, maybe, maybe that's too strong of a statement. Um, let, me, let me take that back and think on it. So maybe in the essence of time, we can maybe try to summarize this thing and look into probable uh, next step. Uh, I, I am like in agreement with Tim that having a unified process for EL and CL will be good because EL have been using the EIP process for whatever the process is as of now, but CL it is going to be a new process altogether to have an EIP process in place. So if we give them something which is closer to what they have been doing in the past, I mean, like the process that they have been following, not the EIP per se, I guess that would be helpful. And again, again agreeing to Micah that there will always be a subset of people who would be in disagreement. So we should, uh, we should understand that there is always a trade-off of new process. We get something and we have to drop something. It seems like uh, the proposed process of uh, using Python is something that, uh, again, in work in progress, obviously we haven't built up the complete spec so far, but that is that has made good progress. Uh, Sam and team are doing, uh, um, uh, doing a great job over there and we hope that it will be really close to the mainnet spec. And coming back to Greg's point, like uh, maintenance may be a problem. I think when a process is in place, uh, we would like to find people, they, they could be helping out maintaining it. So if there is a challenge to just have it the, the diff in the Python, we can definitely look out for people. We can set out bounty if we don't get any volunteers or we can look into other options. Just, uh, But I think uh, moving ahead with a general consensus would be uh, useful and helpful on the larger larger context. Uh, just a question for Tim. I, I am assuming that um, uh, it was supposed to be discussed among client teams and uh, generally speaking, they are in agreement with the pro proposed process. So I don't know that we've made like a formal proposal. Like obviously we've mentioned this a couple of times. Um, and I do think like what, so, so, so first, you know, like the pie spec is not, is not, complete yet like it's it's getting there but it's not like up to the main net yet uh, obviously client teams are, are very busy with the merge so like the amount of time they can spend looking at this is, is quite small um i feel like what might be helpful is trying to list out like okay what is like the general approach what are like the concerns we see and and how we could address them um because i don't i like i feel like greg obviously you have like some objections and like we've gone around them many times, but at some point, you know, we're going to need to make a call and, and, and decide even if like, it's not perfect. Um, so I, you know, well, let's, let's have yeah. that implementation first. If you show up and say, here we are, we, we actually have a full working reference implementation of Ethereum that clearly is doing the job. Um, and, but I mean, they're basically there. I think they're, I, Sam, you 
you know better than me, but I think you're like at the Berlin hard fork now, right? So yeah, like, we're starting. Uh, we're starting Berlin. Great. So you're like right. a fork behind mainnet, like substantive fork behind mainnet, basically. Um, yeah. And but even <laughs> get the code implemented a fork behind mainnet plus the merge. <laughs> well, it, and and that's just code completion. We haven't even started writing the like literate programming, like Greg mentioned. So that that's a whole other right. You know, a lot of work to do. Yeah. Yeah, but again, that would be like in a better position than starting from the yellow paper as on day, right? Because it well, would take another year or so. Yeah, and, and I think I don't know if you. Obviously, like we're not gonna like we have a spec for the merge, and this is not gonna be used for the merge. Um, I think Shanghai is probably like maybe the first fork which we could do both processes in parallel or something, uh, and then like realistically. If we move to that, it would be like the fork after that we deprecate the other process, which is still like much uh, more yeah. than a year away. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, but that said, like, if, yeah, before basically Sam and his team put another year of work into this, you, you I think it, it's valuable to have like a general sense of buy-in from like client teams and also like a list of like, concerns and like potential solutions to them. And there's a bunch of like concerns that like we discussed about just like how the specs works, but then there's another, this whole other kind of level of bike shedding around like how the entire process works together. Um, but yeah, I... Right. Yeah, right. I think um, uh, we can probably use Greg's suggestion here. He earlier mentioned that there is a no, no formal EIP proposed for this changed proposal. I'm assuming we could be um, having a meta E because this is a great change in prop process and informational or any other EIP will not be a good fit for it. Um, so we may be looking for someone who can maybe propose a meta EAP for this change process. And then we take that EAP to the client team asking for their feedback and suggestion. Would that be a right approach for collecting feedback? I'm not sure that like, I don't know, Sam, what do you think? Yeah, um, So I think the reason why we haven't gone to core devs with a formal proposal yet is because we wanted to have like a, not a unified front but at least have some rough consensus among eip editors on a final process and then we go to core devs and be like is this acceptable to you guys and we take up as little of their time as possible um but since we can't reach consensus here maybe we go to them with something a little bit less fully baked i would at least like to um so if, if we're going to do that, I would at least like to have the process, the a proposed process defined, which I still think we're, we don't have that either. Like even if we ignore yeah. um, Greg's concerns, um, like I still still don't think we're, we're there. I'm not suggesting we ignore Greg's concerns. Like, I'm totally happy. <laughs> I, I'm happy. I, I would love for there to be a reference specification. If it's in Python, that's, that's wonderful. That, I would love for that to be there. Um, I just don't want to push the responsibility for that back onto all of the IP authors. Um, you know, certainly if I'm maintaining a client, I don't want to have to deal with random PRs coming in because uh, most likely I'll have to go, what the hell are they actually trying to accomplish with this PR? Okay, that's not a good way to accomplish it. But uh, now I, I can back that PR out and do it the right way. But um, I can go on and on. But, uh, you know, first that needs to be there. It needs to work. We actually need to get through some cycles with it. And then we can kind of go, okay, we have this thing. It works. Uh, we understand it. Um, and we can start we can start to decide how to make a transition. But so, like we've got the cart way before the horse here. Um, so maybe a way to, to do that and like kind of based on, on, on Micah's point is like coming up with a process that we could use for Shanghai in parallel to the EIP process as like a sort of case study or something that like right. obviously won't be perfect, but we, we can iterate on. Um, I, I, I feel like that could be 
a good way. Like it forces us to iron us, iron out the kinks of the, you know, the executable <laughs> specs. Um, and um, talk. and obviously talk all the all the EIPs are gonna are gonna be EIPs for Shanghai. Like we're not gonna have this be the official spec, but like I do think this gives us also like a month or two easily before um, <clears throat> like the Shanghai over. for sorry. Oh, oh yeah, I was just gonna say, yeah, I think yeah, this, this just gives us time. And maybe we can talk about this on the on the next call, but like I feel like, yeah, maybe coming up with a process that's basically a dry run for Shanghai that would happen in parallel to the normal EIP process. Um, is... Yeah, I find it a very good idea. So as of now, like uh, as Sam was mentioning that we were trying to reach to an editor's consensus, EIP editor's consensus before we, it can be proposed to the client devs. We have as of now four EIPs out of editors out of uh, five and now six. So what I can do, like I will try to reach out to these two editors who are not on the call and try to uh, like get uh, uh, their feelings where they are. And in the meanwhile, if either Sam or Tim, uh, we can have a proposal to kind of propose this new process as uh, proposed by Tim that it can be done in parallel for Shanghai. I guess that would be a good trial run. Even if anything goes wrong, there should not be a problem because we have the other process in place, right? What do people think about it? I'm happy to help with that if others want to, to as well. Okay. Uh, so uh, the proposal that is linked here is a HackMD file proposed by Tim. Um, one final question uh, is like, are we planning to create this EIP based on this or is there any change in the proposal because if I remember correctly there was a minor change which was uh, discussed in one of the earlier EIP IP meetings so where do we stand there yeah I think I think I have a separate HackMD that's posted further in the discussion thread that might be a better place to start um, yeah uh, yeah okay um, if it is not too much of a, a hassle Sam would you be willing to maybe propose a um, proposal based on your HackMD and Tim you propose a proposal on your hack and will that be uh, right? I'm, I'm happy to work with Sam and like okay. go off his cool. his proposal and and yeah um I guess we can use the EIP editing channel is that mm -hmm. okay in the discord or is that like an abuse of the channel mm, I think we are trying to change the entire process of EIP so that should be the best yeah. channel okay <laughs> yeah. yeah we can use the EIP editing channel and and yeah coordinate on that so one thing I want to ask, um, which EIP editing channel is the one to oh, discuss this in? In the R&D Ethereum, Discord? Ethereum, yeah. OK. Yeah, yeah. And just because I, I think some client devs might pay attention there, whereas like mm -hmm. I don't think any of them are, are going to hang out in the Cat Critters channel. Um, Agreed. That's right. Yeah, I mean, if that is uh, something on like Ethereum level, we try to generally discuss it on the ETH R&D, but if there is something discussed on a subset level, then we try to move the discussion to cat herders. But I'm happy to share that uh, all EIP editors are on cat herders. So if there is anything missed out, we can probably share it on both the channels. That should not be a problem. Okay, just to maybe summarize this, we are on agreement that we would give it a try to the new process. There would be one met meta EAP that uh, maybe Sam, if I'm not putting you on the spot, will be proposing. Uh, and uh, um, having some discussion on that, we can take that proposal to client teams collecting their feedback. Yep, sounds good. All right, thank you. We are almost at the time, two minutes past, but good that we, we did great on this discussion because this has been there for some time. And uh, I think we already have covered uh, all other items listed for today. There was just uh, one action item section and I'm looking into it um, one action item that I could not finish it up. Maybe I will bring it up in the next meeting. That was uh, uh, collect feedback regarding one-time NFT sale of unused EIP numbers. So I will try to reach out to uh, people and collect some feedback and then we'll bring this item in the next meeting. And rest all seems to be covered. Well, thank you everyone for staying um, a few minutes longer on the call. I hope to see you all in two weeks.
the next meeting is planned on June 29 at 1400 UTC. Thanks, everyone. Bye. Have a great one. Thank Bye. You. Thanks. Bye-bye.